The next portion of this problem involves uh, looking at this charge distribution, which is a little bit different than the first one, which is just discrete charges. Uh, this one is actually a continuous uh, line charge, so infinitely small, but uh, we got a certain distance 2L in the X direction. It has a charge length density of lambda. Um, so whenever we, again, whenever we're doing a chunk of, whenever we evaluate the electric field, uh, the, the R separation between the, uh, the charge density, the contributing charge density, and the point P for the uh, potential, it's going to be some arbitrary x squared uh, plus z squared and this hypotenuse which is this separation distance right here so we can go ahead and just start um, chugging along with our our new shiny po electric potential form right here our inner we're actually going to use an integral now because we're going to go from l to l since this is 2l long or negative l to uh, positive l in our integral so our our rho, our charge density is just lambda here since it's a linear charge density. And then our separation vector or se separation magnitude is gonna be square root of this and then dx. So uh, so this is a constant, lambda is a constant. So this integral kinda moves through and just attacks that one over the square root right here. And if, uh, if you're not familiar with uh, this integral, it's, it, it can be a little tricky. Um, I'm not gonna go through uh, the full steps of it during this, but I'll give you enough to get started just in case you actually want to do this by hand or if you have to. It's always good to know, but uh, you just make this u substitution. That's a secant squared. I'm having a significant difficulties writing it, um, secant squared. So you just make that substitution uh, for for these values here. And then, it, and then it's not too bad. There's some identities you have to work through, but it's uh, nothing too bad. But the end result is what I'm about to write right now. It ends up being a natural log of, of L squared plus uh, Z squared square root over the same thing. That actually needs to be further. On the top is a plus L, the bottom is a minus L. All right, and it's all captured within that square root right there. Uh, that's the end result. So uh, the, the indefinite kind of integral, integral is the nat just the natural log of L squared plus uh, Z squared plus, uh, or X squared plus Z squared plus uh, X, because you have a negative and positive integrals or uh, in limits right there. But that ends up being what it uh, applicably looks like for us. So moving on uh, to do something with that, that is just our uh, electric potential right there. We, what I recommend is just basically stopping right there. I think that's a neat enough form. And the next portion is to find, is to verify that taking the gradient of that is actually equal to the electric field as we solved in a different problem, the one that's uh, referenced in the problem itself. Let's see here. So again, we have a negative. And then we have our uh, gradient of the x component, which ends up being zero. Gradient of the y component, which ends up being zero. That's just because we we have no um, x or y components for this one as well, thanks to symmetry. It's a beautiful thing. And then uh, let's see here. Let me go ahead and copy it. Then our gradient of the electric potential. Um, whoops, let's get rid of that minus sign, a gradient of the electric potential in respect to the z component. And of course that points in the z hat direction and curly bracket. So we can go ahead and signify that these are equal to zero because taking the uh, gradients of those in respect to those components are all equal to zero. Go ahead and distribute the minus sign into our Z component, this uh, partial in respect to Z slips by, and then we start start chomping away at this uh, integral, which again is uh, not too bad, right? Uh, chain rule, start chugging along at it. So it's L squared plus, what is it? Um, Z squared, end of the square root plus L. I'm attacking the, uh, the numerator right now 
for the chain rule. Uh, derivative of uh, one half is uh, one half, and then that turns into, let's see here, minus one, turns into negative one half. So it's everything on the inside, minus negative one half. The derivative, so I'm just taking the derivative of this. Derivative of this is this zero, so really that's the derivative of, of this right here. And then finally, derivative on the inside, which is um, just uh, z squared. In respect to z, it's just z squared, so or 2z. Okay, and then, let's see here, minus... Yeah. Now we're going to do the same exact thing with the, the one in the numerator here, except it's going to be a negative sign. So actually what we're doing, what I'm looking at it is, is kind of expanding this out and turning this into a natural log of this minus a natural log of that, where the top goes in here using uh, that um, expression. That way you can just... Uh, attack then the natural log and, and makes things a lot less complicated when you do the uh the derivative all right so let's see here so it's one over honestly you can just you can just copy and paste this whole thing right here and this should be a bracket sorry guys doing uh derivatives on the fly can get a little messy there we go so now the only difference between these is the fact that there is a minus sign. And you'll see, um, so this actually ends up being a minus L. And everything else essentially stays the same. And then I'll end the bracket here. And then add the Z hat component. Now let's go ahead and do some uh, um, cleaning up. So we have a minus sign here, or sorry, a, a two and then a, a two in the denominator. I dropped an L over here. Let me put that back. And then the same thing goes here. These two goes away. And I think uh, that's good. Let's, so let's go ahead and summarize it here. And you know what? Let's distribute this minus sign and, uh, into this minus sign right here. So we'll just switch, essentially kind of switch those two, but turn that into a positive. You'll see what I mean. So we'll have a light positive lambda. 4 pi epsilon naught, big bracket, and then let's see, you know, 1 over the square root, L squared plus Z squared. Now, this is the positive L right here, uh, also being multiplied by the L squared plus Z squared, negative 1 half, uh, times the Z. I'm just going to go ahead and throw the Z over here, actually. Actually, you know what? I can pull out the Z because it's common to both and just put the Z right here. And then, uh, let's see here. Minus now. Minus uh, everything that was over here because we distributed a negative sign. Uh, so, minus L squared. I couldn't pull this one out because it's not common to both. The denominator is not common to both because it's, it's now a... Uh, Oops, sorry. It's now a plus sign. This should be a negative sign just because I, I switched the, the two because I distributed the negative sign. And then, um, let's see here. L squared plus Z squared minus one half. You know, looking back, uh, I could have pulled that one out. Let's, let's do that to make things cleaner. This is the, uh, the real physics here where actually get to see edits being made on the fly if you see a mistake please let me know in the video that way I can I can uh, I can go back and address them L squared plus Z squared under the square root there we go there we go and, and then now we have the Z hat so that is our uh, gradient of the potential, which is equal to the electric field. I think that's a little bit different form than what's in the uh, the problem that we solved, but I think if we can go back and get these under common denominators, and the rest is just algebra, common denominator, I think we can eventually work back to that uh, original form, but I'm fairly confident this is the, uh, the correct form right here. 
And uh, if you want to work a little bit forward, we can get into it. But this is a long problem, so I'm not going to uh, dwell too much time on that. So 